Alrighty guys, welcome back to Hippo Supercoach. Today we've got my round one review. So let's go through some of these games first. We'll talk about my ranking, um, how I ended up scoring, how happy I am. But first things first, Luke Beveridge, fuck you. Seriously, I have had enough of him. Subs out fucking Sanders. That was one of the worst subs. Like, you think, this is what happened, right? So, Sanders had the ball on, like, half back. He turns it over. Yep, unlucky. Cozzy Pickett, like, closed really quickly on a marking contest and turns it over. I think they kicked a goal from it. And then, all of a sudden, Sanders gets subbed out. You think, you know, this is your prize draft pick. You look after him a bit. You know, maybe you take him to the bench. You say, oh, like, better luck next time. Like, just try not to pull off those sort of kicks. He's just gone with the sub. And why did he get subbed? There were so many players playing worse than him. Harms was fucking terrible. He was doing dumb shit, like trying to fend people off and like sell candy and just getting fucked up. And he could still play out there, but for some reason, Riley Sanders is the one you sub out. Luke Beveridge, you have got to be the shittest coach in AFL history. I've had it with him. It seems like every year we've just got a new thing to complain about him for. I'm glad you lost because... You have got to be top three biggest spastics in the AFL. Um, all right, let's get let's move on from Sanders. Bont was Bont, pretty standard game from him. English as well, solid. But Gorn smashed him in the ruck. So if you guys have been following the channel, you know you should know I have I had Gorn VC. So obviously I took his nice juicy one sixty two. So very happy with that. I was very confident he was going to go large. Um, all week I was, yeah, I was backing him to to go big, but to actually get the points and to go through with it is very nice and pleasing. Um, any other relevance from the Bulldogs? Gallagher looked good, but then faded out. It looked good when he went in the mid. Caulfield, meh. Didn't like his game much. Um, all right, so Hall looked pretty good for Melvin, so he's one to look at. Um, Blake Howes was good, but most people would have started him. Windsor was quite good, but another one that got subbed out for no reason. Um, all right, so Salem, mm, I wouldn't pick him. Viney, 93. Oliver, 105, off 35 touches. So I thought he should have scored a bit more than that, but seven clangers, I guess that's what that does. He's going to be nicely priced for us in the coming weeks. Track, 119. Typical track game. So Billings, 119. This is the interesting one because I think his break even should be pretty low now. We're going to go through some trades and um, literally some live trades. I haven't even looked at Supercoach. So oh, I've, I've done like one or two trades, but like I, did, I haven't looked properly. So um, if you guys see my team, it should be like fully default, like no trades or anything made. Um, and it is, what, 6.13 a.m. on the next day. So Let's wait and see um, how we're looking, but yeah, we'll get through these games first and then we'll have a look. So I think that's pretty much it to discuss from this game. Gorn, if you don't have him, you probably need to get him pretty quickly. So this game was very relevant for me. So we'll start off with West Coast. I had Elliot Yo, very happy with a 96. His time on ground was so chalked. Um, he had two, time, two subs per quarter on the bench. So two interchange stints per quarter on the bench. What the fuck is that? Seriously? He had, like, you know, one sprint up oh, going to the bench. Like, bro, have you not trained all preseason? Like, are you not fit enough or something? Apparently, he's trained the house down from all reports, and all of a sudden, now he can't even play out of fucking half a quarter. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, um, hopefully, he comes good. Just quietly, Andrew Gaff, he has had one of the biggest fall-offs in AFL history, surely. Like, he had four touches at half time. One of them was a clanger. Unbelievable. He's terrible. Absolutely terrible. How he gets a game, I do not know. Um, Harley Reid looked really good in the first quarter. Like, he was just on fire and then faded out. So, whatever. I don't think he's going to be that good of a scorer. I think he'll probably average in the 70s, which will still be enough for us to make a bit of coin. Um, all right, let's move on. Soldo is one to consider. He looked really good as Solruck. Um, maybe he's a downgrade option for Grundy. Grundy's a fraud, but I think I have to hold on to him for now. Um, 
yeah, he looked really good. Butters, I started with him, so happy with his game. He was just cruising. Um, so good to watch him play as well. 66% disposal efficiency. I swear he was getting some like ineffective kicks from kicks that just weren't ineffective at all. But um, you know, it is what it is. 117, you still take that every day of the week. Rosie looked really good as well, but he only had 114. So this was a weird game scoring wise. I think because there's so many poor players scored well, the the scaling sort of had to balance out a bit. Um, Dan Houston, really good super coach dream team ratio, 114 to 75. He had a lot of intercept marks. It felt like all these marks were intercepts. So yeah, when that happens, you're probably going to go pretty big. Um, Wines 94. So look, I'm not sure about him. Yes, he's like 94 is pretty solid score for someone 460k or whatever, but just, I don't know, just goes missing a bit. Like it's, and I swear he was starting forward quite a bit. He wasn't pure mid. I guess that's the issue with so many mids running through that team is you're going to have to give up somewhere. And I just don't think Wines is damaging at all on the forward line. So, yeah, I don't know. I think he might be a trade, but for now we obviously hold. Um, and that's it, really. Let's have a look at this game. So, Caleb Sarong. Fuck you, you little lad. Seriously, now you want to go 170. <sighs> Anyone that started him. Look, you know what? We talk every year about rookie roulette. I think it's primo roulette at this point. Um, some of this shit you just cannot predict. Like, we say it every year, but we always forget. Like, we think we can predict everything in the preseason, but you just can't. Like, it's just physically impossible. And Sarong is another one you just... There's no way you could have predicted he was going to go that big. Why he didn't get tagged is absolutely beyond me, considering he was just dominant. He had seven tackles as well. Like, what a monstrous game. 21 contested. If he, if he does something anywhere near this again next week, he's in. So keep an eye on him, but bloody hell. Him, Tom Green, how do you? How do you get them all? Oliver, it's going to be too hard. Luke Ryan. <sighs> Fucking hell. Seriously, 165. Um, zero clangers. Should have picked him over Hayden. Fraud Young. Fucking dog ears. Ponytail mophead prick. Um, he fucked me over in a lot of leagues. Nat Fife. Oh, Luke Jackson first. Look, you know what? A lot of people saying, oh, Luke Jackson lock. Firstly, kicked two goals. Secondly, we expected him to do well with our Darcy in the team. The issue was never the scoring. The issue was how long he could be so ruck for. So don't jump on him. If you started him, it's a solid pick, depending on how long Darcy's out for. But if you didn't start him, don't jump on him now. Um, 5103, very good from him. I think he can honestly average 100. He went at 57% and still turned up. So cleans that up a little bit. That's more like a 115. Looks great in the midfield. What, what's the note on him? What's the freaking badge? Uh, arms paid him, so he frees four. Okay. So they're saying he got bailed out. Jeremy Sharp, 70. Shit, I didn't realize he went that big. Now he's going to have to come in. All right, so who, who are the must-haves? So Sharp, we're going to look at break-even soon, but Sharp, McKercher, Billings, Bonner, D'Ambrosio. I think that's going to be my general consensus with the my, my trades this week and next week we need to get the the high oh, sorry the low break evens um we'll have a look in a second it's going to be this video is going to be very long guys um can do some live trading with me so yeah um could either be very boring or very interesting depending on if you like looking through trades or not and it obviously opens anyone's opinion if you know what to do with my team. Because <laughs> at this point, I don't even know what to do. Uh, Andrew's good. Dunkley, good. Lions, 81. So if you started him, good job. That's a solid score for that price because he scored 100 last week. Um, he's going to have to probably come in as well. Not this week, but the next. Um, just because he's got the buy this week. So, yep. Very happy with him. If, he, if you own him, I do not. Um, and then that's pretty much it. What did Conor McKenna score? 49, and he got injured. Hamstring, rip. Alrighty, so we scored 2-1-4-9. Considering how bad our Thursday, Friday, Saturday was, that's not a bad score. Um, 33k rank 
overall. So obviously not happy with that, but I do know I can trade decently. Um, touch wood, <laughs> not Jack Steele. Um, so I think I can catch up, and it is only round one. There's a lot of fluky scores in this game, in this round. So we'll see what happens. Let's have a look at the team. What are we going to do? What? It says I have two, used two trades. Let me refresh. Okay, no, I haven't. All right. So this is how the team looks. Um, all right. Hmm, 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 hmm. If you want me to hear my opinion on any of the players, guys, just go back and check my round reviews. So, sorry, my weekly, uh, nightly reviews or whatever the fuck it is. Don't even know my own content. So, how much have we got? We got 53k in the bank. Not much is the answer. Grundy, oh, it's disgusting to have you on the field. <laughs> that face is glitched. Um, I'd, I'd, I was interested to see how the Chrome extension held up after um after the rounds because obviously updated data and yeah just to see the bugs so zach fisher i i want to hold him but i'm tempted to fade him or to trade him because just because i need to get rid of someone i need heaney um let's have a look at break evens real quick in another tab um let's sort by break even blake house minus 86 Fucking hell, Thomas Berry. What did this bailout score? 62 and then 104. So what, he's a lock now, is he? Oh my god, man. Jesse Hogan is minus 46 and he plays West Coast next week. Oh my god. <laughs> How many players do we have to get in, man? Naismith, you know, Lions. D'Ambrosio, I think I'm okay with waiting a week on. Sharp probably needs to come in. I think the reality of it is someone has to go. Big calls are going to have to be made. Bonson Pally, see you later. No. <laughs> Nick Martin might have to go, but I don't want to give up on the pick because I did back him all preseason. And I still am, like... The role is really good. He just needs to clean up his kicking. And like, surely, 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 after this week, the coach goes to him, what the fuck were you thinking? You don't need to try and hit a spear kick every time you touch the ball and look like a hero. Um, so, Crouch and Wines and Butters and Bont can't go. Hewitt can. Fuck you, Hewitt. I don't even know why I picked you, considering I didn't even think about your preseason. You square-headed prick. Um, <laughs> I actually like the George Hewitt pick. I think he will come decent, but look, at this point, we need value. Um, and I'm thinking about jumping on guys that are on the bubble, like Thomas Berry. So let's see what happens if we swing King Jordan into the mid. And look, Thomas Berry, I mean, if we look at his profile, um, let me move my camera up to the top right. Thomas Berry, he's going to go up 60k basically if he scores 55. So that's like almost must have territory. I don't see him getting dropped. I don't see him being the sub if he's coming off a ton. What the hell did he do? Did he kick a bunch of goals? How did he kick one goal? 17 touches, three ta seven tackles. Is he playing mid or something? Surely he can't be playing mid in that team. There's like fucking 10 mids that are good. I don't know. Anyway, he might have to come in and it might have to be a blind trade. Blind, but what I mean by blind is I don't know where he's going to play. So let's say we bring him in, big bad T Berry. How much money does that give us? 330k. We need Heaney. I mean, how, wait, actually, what's Heaney's break even? Minus 12. The problem with Heaney is we need him this week because of his fixture. Essendon, Richmond, West Coast. <laughs> Gold Coast Hawthorne's not bad either. And he just looks like... He genuinely looks ridiculously fit. Um, the way he was covering the ground was scary to watch as a non-owner. And he has to come in. The question is, how does he come in? 
So 480k. So I need like 150k. Look, Zach Fisher might have to go. Oh, but see, I back him as well. I really back him to bounce back as well. Fuck me. Are there any cheap rucks? Because I'm down to trade Grundy. Oh, but then again. Zach Williams. Gibkiss. What does Gibkiss down look like? What's Dean going to make this week? Mm, not not a heat, but still pretty solid break even. Don't know too much about his job security, if I'm being honest. Um, 357k. Well, let's just complete those for now and we'll activate the boost so we can use that third trade. Um, yeah, I'd love to know you guys' thoughts So right now. So if you want to jump in the comments, feel free. Hayden Young, you know what? You could fucking go if you're not careful. I've already got two people on my team that look like chicks. Hayden Young and Harley Reid. I don't really want two. I'd rather have just Harley Reid. So maybe that's going to be the reasoning. <laughs> Zach Reid, no. And this is the issue. Like, who do I get rid of? Cabin's doing fine. Wilson's doing fine. Sexton's doing fine. Five. Flanders, Reid, doing great. It's almost like Fisher has to go. What's Fisher's break even? 92. Oh, God. I, I don't know, man. Like, I really do back him. This is the issue. As Sanders as well, like... Maybe Heaney just can't come in and I've missed the boat. And I just have to hope to God that he flops. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Jack Billings. He's another one that has to come in. But for who for? What if we go Clark? Clark's shit. Does that give us enough for Heaney if we swing Fife up? Fife up. Oh my god. A 2k off. Are you fucking shitting me? How much is Billings going to make? Mm, break even a 5. I don't know if I trust him. Low key. What are these numbers today? Jack Billings. What the fuck? Oh. 23 touches, 15 marks. 15 marks is definitely not sustainable. I don't know. The roll is very average. Do we go we'll pull the trigger on Hogan? Big J Hogue. <laughs> There's no way, man, I'm fucking that short of Heaney. Anyone cheaper than Dean than I could get, maybe? Don't think so. Not that played anyway. Fuck's sake. I really want Heaney. But then again, like if I get Heaney, who do I put on the bench? Sexton probably. Or Harley Reid, I don't know. It's it's very difficult and I don't know what to do. What if we pull the trigger on Zach Williams? Nah, see, Zach Williams, I reckon, I rate. Like, these halfbackers, Williams, Martin, Fisher, I picked them all for a reason. And we all did. So I don't think we should jump on, jump off them off one bad game because they're clearly capable. They clearly have good roles. Oh, it's just so awkward. Like, I could theoretically pull the trigger on Sanders, but I liked what I saw. I feel like he can have some big games and make some coin. But then again, his break even might be chalk now. 26. And uh, McCurch is another one that has to fucking come in the lad. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, 
Look, Fisher. Like, who do I feel? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Look, I've never been this stuck. I have to pull a trigger on someone. The question is, who's it going to be? Zach Williams, what's your break even? Minus four, and he has the buy. Oh, fucking hell. This game's all about making money. I know. All right, for now, let's just leave it at that. Leave some money in the kitty for next week. Not use a boost. And then see what to do next week. I mean, we could jump off Roberts, but I still think he's got a nice roll too. Oh, no, minus 58 break even. Not a chance in hell. You know what, Fisher? You're fucking gone. Heaney, welcome to the squad. I know you've got a buy, but who cares? All right. So 252k in the bank. Heaney's in. That's it. That's the video, guys. If, if you have any better uh, options for my team, feel free to leave a comment. Leave a comment on what you guys are doing as well. <laughs> You've mine most traded out. Fuck it out. Hayden Young. Anyway, that's it for the video, guys. 21 minutes. If you lasted this long, appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.